Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. As I was listening to Professor Greenberg talk about her uh, interaction with the early days of transparency or online government, uh, I have to admit I'm guilty as charged. I think I was the next to the last person to file my contribution to the expenditure letter <laughs> on, on, online. I thought paper was the easiest way to go because I generally handle most of that myself uh, and I just resisted becoming computer literate. Uh, the good news is later I was forced to, uh, but I can think back in the, in, in thinking back kind of where we've come uh, over the years as far as openness in government. I can think back in the early 70s when I served on the uh, Alien School Board in the suburbs of Houston, uh, there was information, we had a, we'd have a board meeting and we would get packets of information to review uh, like is normal. And, uh, but there were certain things, if you were digging down to the root of something, to a decision, you know, they, the superintendent had uh, already uh, knew what decision the board was going to make. Any good superintendent should know that, you know, shouldn't be surprised. Well, there were a few of us that were inquisitive and would start asking for more information. And it was almost like the information wasn't available. I said, look, I know the information is available because you had to have something to build up to this point. So as a sitting school board member, I had extreme difficulty getting certain information to help myself make a proper decision. And I can look back now and only imagine what a citizen trying to get that information, the trouble they would have had. In fact, my guess is some of it just wouldn't have been available to them. And we're not talking about proprietary stuff. We're not talking about personal information. So I take that experience and I move forward. I was elected to the Texas House in 1982. My first session was 83. If we had an IBM selector, we thought we were doing pretty good. Uh, very quickly, computers began to come on uh, the scene, and uh, in you know the pace of government uh, increased substantially. The appropriations process, which Sherry touched on to some degree, has come a long way. There are still areas that you can't just. The conference committee is currently working. They hope to have the budget completed, put to rest, uh, maybe uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday. It'll probably be Wednesday. There are certain meetings when they don't have a quorum when you are not this, are not welcome to sit in to see how the decisions are made, the working groups. It's my belief, and I served for a number of years on appropriations, I know how that goes. I know that you're, you get a little bit anxious or maybe even fearful about sharing some of those private conversations with other main members about how you reach the decision as to what to fund or not. But having been on the inside and then viewing from the outside and having a responsibility to look at some of that, you begin to understand how important it is to have that information. And there's nothing to be fearful of. You're not dealing with your money. You're dealing with the public's money, with all of our money collectively. So there should be nothing to be feared by sharing uh, your decision-making process. But, but we, we still tend to have that. The good news is they've come a, a long way in that. It, at least you can you could go online as soon as they got the side-by-sides or the House budget and the Senate budget, you could go and look. We still don't have those decisions in real time of what decision they made when you've got a difference between the House and the Senate. What number did they actually come up with? That's the, that's the next thing we need to do, and do that very quickly. And, so, and, and that's doable. That's doable without a great deal of experience, uh, expense. And so, but we at Texas Public Policy Foundation uh, have been real pleased to watch and participate in the maturing of transparency. Uh, I have to give, and I know Comptroller Susan Combs was here earlier, and I know she covered everything that she's doing. I'm sure I wasn't able to hear it, but I have to give her and uh, Governor Perry a lot of credit 
and that certain legislators, uh, for Representative Strong is certainly one that took a leading role last session in seeing that transparency with House Bill 3430 was uh, brought forward. And uh, the controller with where the money goes is seen as an award-winning expenditure database around the country. In fact, Texas is looked to, there are states that have, in certain areas, uh, out, outpaced Texas, but when you look as a whole, as far as the financial transparency, Texas has been one of the leaders in that just uh, starting uh, uh, three years ago. So we have a site, a website, texasbudgetsource.com, which the, the intent and the purpose of that is to have a clearinghouse for everything that is financially, uh, all government uh, finances that's online, we try to link to. And as people come online, it's difficult to always stay up with it, but we have if the links to the controller's information, to school districts that have their budgets and checkbooks, check registers online, to uh, the county, and, and Texas has the distinction of having the first county in the nation to put their check register online, Collin County. Uh, and, and we have over 300 school districts that currently have their uh, check registers <coughs> information online. Uh, it's, cities are, are slower, you mainly find budget information there. Uh, but it's our goal, and we were hoping to see more legislative progress this session, but it looks like there's not going to be a lot. We had some transparency uh, information put into the uh, Textile Sunset Bill, which I think was a big, uh, a big plus in getting that in. Uh, we hope to see universities not be compelled to putting financial information and information about classes and professors. We think students have a right to be able to uh, take a look at who will be uh, teaching them and what their track record is and kind of and, and what the university is spending in certain areas. And we're hoping that universities will come forward and not but have to be mandated to do that, but out of a necessity, out of the necessity of better serving their clientele, their students, and the parents who sometimes pay the bills. Uh, we're hoping that that will be the next wave. Now there's there's an important factor that data is online. Yes, you can go in some cases, you can do some searches, but we need to have the data much more searchable as the technology is there and uh, it's, it, have it so that you can manipulate the data and find what you're looking for. We believe a simple thing like having, uh, when you have a, a contract, uh, you solicit bids, you get the bids in, you evaluate, have all of the win winning and losing contracts online so people can look and see how a decision was made. Yes, it's second guessing government, but the fact is, it's your right to do that. 